Good morning, everybody. How are you doing this morning? It is Pastor Josh, and it is Wednesday, September 18th. My friends, I hope and pray, as always, that your day and your week are going well. And I just, I look forward to our time to be together to explore devotionals and scriptures to to hear what's going on in each other's lives and and to come alongside each other as we go out and and share our faith and live deeply into our faith so friends again going to invite you just to create a a place and a space where you can just be fully present and focused on um, the presence of God and on the things that God has to speak to you today. And I also just ask that you just allow the, the Holy Spirit to just, you know, just fall upon you and just wash over you and, and empower you to go about your day um, as you as you listen to this and consider the things that are, you know, that, that are talked about or that God reveals to you through the reading of Scripture um, this morning. Friends, I am going to ask for a prayer request um, before I go into um, our opening prayer, and that is that um, this afternoon um, we are starting our Kids Zillion and youth group programs at our church, um, and I'm I'm really really excited about that. I love working with the kids, and I love seeing um, you know kids learn and grow and develop and. Um, just learn to live into their faith. It's such a meaningful experience. And so, friends, if you would just, you know, stand with me in prayer that these um, programs will just really bless the kids, that the, they'll add a lot of value to the kids' lives and that they will, you know, it will be an encouragement and a support for them to grow deeper in their faith. Um, I would would greatly appreciate that. And then if you want to hold us, us teachers um, um, <clears throat> in your prayers as well, um, we can always appreciate that because when you deal with kids all afternoon, um, you know, it takes some patience and we obviously want to do the very best job that um, we can do to reflect Christ in our own lives as we teach and interact with the kids. So if you would help me with that, that would mean a lot to me. Friends, if you have any um, prayer requests that you would like to lift up and share for us to to be in agreement with and to pray alongside of you, please let us know and we would be excited and happy to do that. So friends, let's jump in and let's let's open ourselves with a moment of prayer. Dear gracious and loving God, we just thank you and we praise you for this day that you have given us. Lord, we ask that you just open our eyes to see all of the things that you are doing. Lord, the last few days we have talked about getting rid of some of the skepticism and doubt and just living fully into our faith, understanding that you are always with us and there's nothing that you are not able to do. And so, Lord, just help us to have your eyes, to see what you're doing in this world, but to also see how we might encounter and experience the world around us, how we might do ministry and mission, how we might speak life into the lives of other people as we come alongside and we talk with them, we listen with them, we care and we serve them. And Lord, we also just, just continue to pray that you draw each of us deeper into the relationship that we have with you. Lord, we are we are your disciples and our, our goal is to just continually to grow in our faith and to, you know, have that tra that faith transform us so that that we can do the very same things that your son Jesus was able to do in his earthly ministry. Um, so, Lord, we just thank you for this time. We ask your blessing upon this devotion in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends. Well, let us continue this morning in our our study and devotional of the gospel of mark <coughs> excuse me and today we are looking at chapter 6 verses 7 through 13 in the subheading that i have in my bible is called the mission of the 12 so if you have your bible or an app i really invite you to follow along and to see what god highlights for you so let's begin it says he called the 12 and began to send them out two by two 
and he gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to put, and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So that they went out, and they proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons, and anointed with oil many who were sick, and cured them. All right, friends. So what is it this morning that sticks out most for you? You know, I, I always encourage you guys, before you before you listen to me, before you start reading through the notes or the commentaries that might be in some of your Bibles, I always encourage you to listen to, to the voice that, that God is speaking to you again. Maybe it's a word that was just like highlighted or that just really resonated with you. Maybe it was a, a, a sentence or an entire verse. But friends, I invite you to just... Um, you know, really consider what that might mean for you. So friends, you know, one of the, the things that I think is so interesting is that, you know, in the this progression, if you will, in this discipleship progression, um, we've watched as Jesus has called these people, called his disciples, and they've been following around, following him around, for a while and they've been listening to him teach they've been watching him perform these miracles but as of yet mark portrays them i think as kind of on the outside right they're they're observers they're watching what's going on and um they're learning from him both experience experientially as they're you know they're trying to help and assist him in different things but this is the first time in here in chapter six that we really see that jesus says okay guys I've modeled for you, I've taught you the things that we are about and the things that we're going to do. So now you go out and do these things, right? So he commissions them and he sends them out. And and what's really interesting, friends, is that he sends them out two by two, right? And um, I can't think of the scripture right now. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's an Old Testament scriptures, but it's the idea of the, the three-stranded cord, right? That That... Two is better than one, but when Jesus is in the center of that, like nothing, there's a, there's a great strength, like nothing can break that bond, right? And and so, friends, I I envision that that image of that three strand cord of the disciples going out two by two, one, so that if something happens to one, you know, the other's there to help, to be a support, to be an encouragement, um, to keep that person safe. And then when we think about the fact that that Christ is going with them or the Holy Spirit is going with them, right? That there's this three-stranded cord that allows them to go out and fulfill the ministry that Jesus um, has instructed them and called them to do. So friends, um, one of the things that I think about is how many of us have a partner that we go out and we do ministry with? That we go out and share the gospel with people and we we serve others and we you know we pray for other people and i really want us to consider that because one of the things that again this is just this is kind of an assumption i have or an opinion i have i guess i'll i'll, I'll clarify that is that it seems to me that part of the reason that that we as believers struggle to engage in evangelism so often is that we think we have to go out and we have to do it alone. Okay? And that really scares us because, you know, not only is that that uncertainty of like, well, what happens when I'm out here all by myself and what happens if I get rejected and what happens if if people respond, you know, forcibly with me even or what happens when when this happens and and we face these challenges. So friends, Jesus didn't just send his disciples out one by one out all alone to go do this ministry. Now, again, for those of you that have have read your scriptures, you'll you'll see again as the progression as the disciples go forward in their their development in their growth as disciples of Jesus that eventually they do. They they're strong enough to go out and and go to the places that God calls them to do, but that's not where he starts them. 
And so, friends, one of the things that we have to really consider is that, especially as we are starting out, and we're 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 trying to figure out how we share the gospel, how we witness to people, how we we engage in conversations and care for the people in our our communities and families, you know, make sure that we're partnering up with people. And again, this can be done numerous ways, right? I mean, it can be in 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 our case, right? It can be Sarah and I tag teaming up, right? A, 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 a husband and wife doing stuff. There are times that I team up with my kids, right? And it's 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 us going out and doing doing something. Or again, it can be a friend or a, another um, person from church that go out and and you share the gospel and you you serve and you care for the people that are in your lives that God places there. And friends, I think having that support system is really, really important for us because it's it doesn't make the task feel so daunting, right? Because we know someone's got our back. And even in that moment, even if that person we're trying to witness to, you know, refuses or that rejects us or rejects the message we're trying to have, you know, that person can be there to support us and say, hey, it's all right, let's, let's go on, you did a good job. And so, friends, I, I invite you to really, if you are someone that can't readily identify a, a, a disciple partner, you know, or someone to do ministry with, I had, would really encourage you to pray to God today and ask God to put somebody in your life that you feel comfortable doing that with. And, friends, I'll also say that, again, this is one of the reasons that we need the church, right? We need each other in the church so that we can do these very things. All right, and so if you're not connected with the church, you know I really encourage you to, you know, find a church where where you can can be a part of a faith community. Um, and again, you're always welcome to to come and and worship with us. Um, you know, and even if you're a long way away, um, you know, we do offer the the live streams and the recorded things and you know all you have to do is reach out to us and say hey you know i i'm not in your your local area but i would love to partner with you and and see how you can support me in in being able to you know live live out the the ministry and mission that god has called me to do in my life and we will definitely do everything that we can to come around you to do that now friends the other thing that i think really stuck out for me this morning um, was this idea that Jesus orders them to really take nothing for their journey, right? They're to just go with the clothes on their back and a walking stick, essentially. Like, here you go. Go out and go to these places that I'm sending you. But don't take all of these provisions, right? Don't take all of these things that bring comfort and bring security to you and for you. So friends, why do you think Jesus does that? Well, I think he does it because it requires that we really put our trust and our faith in him. Right? That when we don't have the things that we think we need, right, we have to rely, we have to trust that Jesus is going to provide those things for us. Right. And and again, friends, this is where our deep and I would even say radical faith comes in. And it's it shouldn't seem so radical. But for those of us that live like in the West and in the United States, it seems like a very radical thing because we are surrounded by the comforts and the security of the material possessions and wealth and things that we possess. Right. And in one of the things that I have deeply been considering the last um, I would say several years is the effect that the supposed comfort that we think we have is actually undermining some of our faith, right? And, and, and I think that we can see this, that again, when we're able to provide for all of our own needs, or we think we are anyway, right? It becomes a lot easier to become more distant in our faith. And I'm not saying that that happens all of the time. But I do believe that if you really take a moment to think about it, like your faith may look different if you can't just walk into a grocery store and buy every single thing that you need, 
right? It might look very differently if you need to depend on God to help you find and provide shelter for you and not the fact that you've got, you know, three houses that you can go to if something happens to one. And so, again, I'm not demeaning wealth. I think wealth and material possessions, I mean, they can be really good things, and we should thank God for the things that we have in our lives. But we also have to make sure that we're not relying on that comfort and the security that we think those things bring and place those and elevate those above God and above the things that God calls us to do. And, you know, one of the things that I have personally started to do in my, I guess, in my life is to sort of disconnect from some of the comforts that I have. And and this might sound almost aesthetic, if you will, right? Like, again, one of the things that I do is I, I wake up early in the morning, right? I don't just sleep in as long as I want um, and... I, I, you know, I kind of force myself to wake up in the morning so that I can be, um, to, to understand that, you know, there might be a time when my life really requires that, that there are certain things, certain times that I don't get full amounts of rest and sleep that I might desire because God is calling me to go and do things or things are happening within my life that, that, that don't allow me to do that. Right. And, and in so, some ways, I see that sort of as a training, right, as a as a way of saying, you know what, OK, I'm, I'm going to be prepared for this when it comes. You know, there there are times that, again, that I, you know, Sarah and I have a, a, a portable sauna and I sit in that every day, you know, and, and there are times that the heat just gets immense and it's hard. It's like, gosh, I don't want to sit in here. And then after that, I go take a cold shower. Right. One, it actually feels pretty good to be cold, but again, like it's it's a shock to your body. You know, we're so used to having warm access to warm water in a moment here in the U.S., right? And and what would it look like if if that wasn't possible, right? What does it look like for the people in the world that you know they have to walk miles just to get clean water, or at least suitable water, not maybe not even clean water like we have here. And when it comes to, you know, the ability to bathe yourself and stuff, they're, they don't have the warm water to do that with. And so again, friends, maybe those sound like really silly practices to you. And maybe those aren't the practices that, that you'll be called to, you know, operate out of. But I, for me, I found that they have been very, very effective because it, it disconnects me from this sense of comfort. And, and it makes me realize, you know, like any of these material possessions, any amount of the wealth and things that I have, those things that can be uh, attributed to comfort and security, right? Those could be gone like this, right? And if I'm so reliant and so trusting on those things, what happens when they're not there? And will my life be shaken because rather than building my house on the rock, I've built them on comfort and security. And friends, this is, for me, this is a really deep thing. And I, I really encourage you guys to, to take some time to think and reflect on that. Because again, God calls us to go do stuff. And and sometimes it it doesn't even seem possible for us to do what God calls us to do, right? Because if we're going to try to do it by our own means, our own strength, our own provisions, I, I don't honestly believe that sometimes it's possible for us to do that. And so we need to rely in faith, believing that God will provide and equip us to do the things that he calls us to do. And then lastly, friends, just to conclude this morning, you know, he, he encourages, he says, hey, go out and and go to people's house right i get the sense that they're like doing good old fashioned evangelism where they're walking the streets they're hanging out in the marketplaces they're going door to door talking to people and he says you know what if people invite you in good spend some time there you know share the message with them proclaim the gospel go out and and heal the sick and and deliver the people from 
from the demons. But if people don't receive you, then shake the dust off your feet and go away. Right? Because again, friends, there's this, this truth that not everyone is going to receive the message, despite the fact that we believe and wish that everyone would. But he says, look, don't take offense at that. You know, they're not willing to hear it. They're not willing to listen to the message. So shake your feet off and go about your business and go on to the next house. And then when you find someone, spend the time there. Do the ministry. Sow the seeds. Right? And and encourage them to to be my followers, to, to have a relationship with me. So, friends, think about those those kind of three different themes that we've talked about. One, about going out and finding a buddy or a partner to go out and do ministry and mission with, especially if you're you're kind of brand new to faith and, and things. Um, you know, while I encourage people to use their discernment, obviously, you know, there's a ton of great stuff on YouTube about how to, to share the gospel message. There are organizations that you know, produce a lot of literature on, on how to share the gospel message. And then, again, find some place in your church or your community where you can step in and, and share your gifts and talents and serve other people, right? Because I think that, that that's, that's really important for the, both the life of the church, but also for you as a, as a disciple. So we've got finding a buddy to go out with, learning to consider or at least reflect on on how the comfort and the security that we think we have in life dictates how we do stuff and and for us to really consider are we are we really allowing god to be the provisional foundation for our lives or are we you know have have we elevated ourselves or our stuff above god and then finally friends you know just keep spreading the message go out to the people in your lives and when someone says no don't quit right don't quit go on and serve the next person because this world is full of people that need to hear the message some of them will accept it there are tons of people that need to be served and cared for and what a blessing that will be for them when you step in and do it but if you go out and you get that one or two rejections and you go you know what this is just too hard i'm done Guess what? That person, that th- the person that was third in line, that whose life is going to be changed and transformed, is going to miss out, perhaps, or God's going to have to bring somebody else in, and you will have missed out on the blessings that will happen because of that encounter. So, friends, with that, um, I wish you a great rest of your day. As always, if there's anything that we can pray for you or support you in, by all means, reach out to us um, and share your thoughts and comments on some of the things that we have talked about as well as some of your experiences. My friends, God bless, and we will see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Bye-bye.